In this video, we are going to build a weather application using Node.js. The purpose for this project is to show you how to make use of API calls in Node.js. Before we begin, at least we need to be familiar with Express, that is how to create a simple Express server and how to use a template engine like EJS. But don't worry, I'll explain every bit of code I'm going to write. So let's look at the demo for this application. So we are going to enter any name of the city or location we want to know more about the weather. When I set for Kumasi and I hit get weather, let's see, you can see that it gives me the temperature and then the state of the weather and the location. If I provide a location that doesn't exist, for example, something like this, and I search, you can see that I got an error. And this is what we are going to build. And we are going to use a template engine called EJS and the API from OpenWeather. And to make our life easier, I have already prepared the starter template for you and it can be found in my GitHub repository and I'll provide the link for you. If you open that and each project has been categorized under branches. And when I click on branches, as you can see, we are going to work with Node.js. When I click on that, I have the project under Node.js. Depending on the time of watching this video, it can happen that you're going to have a couple of projects. But what we are going to work with is called the Weather App Starter Template. And this is what we are going to use. So click on Code, copy that, and anywhere you want to place that. For me, I'm going to put it inside a folder called Weather Application. And I have cloned it already. So let me show you how you're going to do it. So let's say that you want to keep the project inside this folder and I'm going to open the terminal and I'll make use of git clone and I'll paste the git link and I'll hit enter. But for me, I have it already. So I'm not going to do that. And after doing that, we need to open the specific folder called weather app starter template. And after that, we need to install all the dependencies and make use of yarn or npmi. All right, so after that, let's go ahead and look at the packages that we are going to use. Inside the package.json file, we are going to make use of Axios to make the HTTP request and UJS for the template and Express to create our server and request. For this one, we are going to use Axios instead of the request. So we can even remove this one, but let me maintain it. And this is a script to run our server and that is yarn server or npm run server. All right, so let's look at the folder structure. Inside the public, we have the CSS with some few lines of code. And inside the view, we have the index.ejs, and this is a template that renders the page. And I have linked up the custom CSS. The next one is going to be the server. And over here, I have implemented the code for you for the server. And here, I set up the engine by using ejs. And this one serves the static asset, and that is the CSS. And this is the home page. As you can see, I use res.render and this render the index.ejs file. And for the weather, I pass in now and error now. And this is the route to get the weather. So let's run the application and let's have a look. All right, so let's open it inside the browser. Let me refresh it. And this is what we are going to work with. When I go to forward slash, as you can see, it renders the EJS template, and that is the index.ejs, which is inside the views. So this is the template that has been rendered. And if I go to forward slash weather, this is where we are going to make the actual request. 
So let's go ahead and implement the logic. And this is the route where we are going to implement the logic. And this line of comment says that add your logic here to fetch the data from the Open Weather API. So first of all, we need to have an account with Open Weather because we want the API keys. For me, I have already logged in. And if I click on my profile name, I have my API keys. So make sure that you copy your API key. Next is we need to know the endpoint that we are going to hit. And we have different endpoints that we can use. And if you go to forward slash current, let's look at what we are going to use. And this is the endpoint that we are going to use, which is this. So I'll go ahead and copy that. And back to the application, I'm going to add a comment by saying URL is equal to code and I will paste that. All right, so looking at the URL, let's look at the parameters it needs. First of all, it needs the latitude and then the longitude and then the API key. But for this one, we are not going to use the latitude and then the longitude. So we are going to change this one to use what is called query. So I'm going to remove the longitude and then the latitude from here. After the question mark, and I'm going to use what is called Q, meaning query, and it's equal to the city that I want to find the weather condition. So because I'm going to inject some dynamic data, I'm going to put it inside template literals as that. And for the value for the query, I'll pass in what is called the city. And we can get the city from the query here. So I'm going to use dollar sign here and the city. And next one is going to be the API, which is this. But I'm going to pass in additional query here because we are not going to use the longitude and the latitude. So we need to modify the actual endpoint or the URL. So after the city, and I'll bring in the end operator because I'm going to chain another query. And the next query is going to be what is called the unit. So it's going to be as unit. And is equal to imperial and end operator, then the app ID, and that is the API key. So I'm going to declare a variable called the API key, which is equal to let me copy my API key. Make sure that you use your own API key because I can change or deactivate it at any point in time. So I'll copy that and paste it here. And I'm going to use it as dollar sign and then the API key as API key. Now we have the API that we are going to hit. Next is let's make the actual call. And I'm going to use async await. So I'll mark the function as async. And before the rendering, I'm going to bring in the try and catch over here. And before the try block, I'm going to declare a variable called weather. And by default, it is now. And the error also as error by default it is also now and this is where i'm going to make the actual call so let's bring in the axios package as const axios is equal to require the axios package Then inside the try, I'm going to make the actual HTTP request and it's going to be const response is equal to await and the axios package dot get. And I'm going to pass in the URL 
as the URL of our API, which is this. Let me make it as API URL to be more specific. All right, so with this one, when I console log the response, let's save it. But before we can see the response, let's look at how we are going to trigger because we can only get the response when we hit this endpoint. That is forward slash weather. And we can trigger this endpoint by clicking on the button called get weather. So let's see the implementation. So back to the index.ejs file, this is a form. And as you can see, we pass in the action, meaning that the endpoint that we want to hit, and that is forward slash weather. Let me close this file. And the method is get method. And this is an input with a placeholder and then the name. And the type is called submit with the text as get weather. Meaning that when we click on get weather, we are calling this endpoint for slash weather, which is this. All right. Let me remove the console log and let's continue the implementation. Inside the try, if everything goes on well, we are going to get the actual weather details and we are going to reassign to the weather here. So it's going to be weather is equal to response dot data. And if something goes wrong, we are going to reassign weather is equal to now. And for the error, we can use error dot message or we can use our custom error as error. And we will say, please try again. All right. So with this one, let's remove the now for the weather and then the error also because we have them being updated up here as that. So with this one, let's go ahead and try our luck. And let me go to forward slash weather and pass in any city name and let's see. As you can see, something has happened, but we have empty data. So the next step is, let me show you how we are going to pass the data we got from the API call to the template. So back to the route. And the way EGS work is that for the render, we pass in the first argument, that's a template. Next is the data that we are going to pass to this template. And for this, we are passing the weather and then the error to this template. So let me show you how it's going to work for EJS. For EJS, we use this syntax as that. And for this, we can write any valid JavaScript as that. So here we are checking if we have an error because we have the error being passed to the template. If I make use of something like this and when I save it, and let me assign to a variable to something like now, when I say this one and when I refresh the page, well, let me restart the server and let's see. All right, it has been restarted. And as you can see, we got this beautiful error as error is not defined simply because the template is trying to access a variable called error being passed from the route but there is no variable of that sort. That is why we got the error. So let me bring it back to normal. So over here, we are checking if you have an error, then we are going to display this error message. All right. And to be able to inject data, we use equal to, and then the actual value, and then we close it as that. Inside the X block, because here we have whether this is where we are going to add the data. So let's see how we are going to implement that. I'm going to be pretty simple using EJS. All right. So over here, we have the data on the weather. So it's going to be, I'm going to put it inside P tag and I'm going to use the I tag and I'm going to give it a class FA dash thermometer half. This is font awesome icon and I'm going to add the actual value. 
as percentage sign equal to that. And I'm going to inject the weather. On that, we have the value on the mean and on the temperature as that. And let's save it and let's have a look. Let's refresh it. And we have this error because we are not closing the EGS syntax well. It's supposed to be percentage sign as that. Let's see. And we have it. But I want to add the Fahrenheit symbol at the end. So I'm going to use HTML entity here as that and degree and F. All right, so let's see. Refresh it. And we have it as that. The next value is I'm going to copy this and paste it here and change the icon to cloud. And here we are going to use a property called weather. If you console log weather, you're going to see all the properties that we need. So I'm going to grab the first index as that. And let me remove this one. Save it and let's see. Well, I need to grab dot main as that. So let's have a look. All right, we have it. Lastly, I want to add the country. I'll copy this. And I'm going to use location icon. So here is going to be map dash marker dash out. And it's going to be weather dot name. And let's remove this. And I also want to add comma here, then the country as system dot country. All right, cool guys. So now let's have a look. And there we go. All right, guys, here ends this project. If you like it, don't forget to like, comment, and share to promote me to do more videos like this. Catch you up in my next project.